Right. Uh, thank you and hi everyone. I hope you're uh, enjoying the symposium so far. So with me today you will learn about the diversity of invertebrates within the Western Pacific Bacarc basins and this will be done through a barcode approach uh, with a specific focus on decapods and polychids. My name is Ambre Chabert and my thesis supervisor is Stéphane Ordez from the Observatory of Bagnols-sur-Mer in France. So a hydrothermal vents are home to endemic communities of highly specialized organisms. These, from these habitats, hot fluids laden in minerals exit the seafloor, and uh, these uh, precipitate and form uh, deposits whose accumulation forms chimneys. The fluid, the fluid is also composed of reduced chemicals such as hydrogen sulfide or iron, and those chemicals are oxidized by bacteria to produce organic matter, forming the so-called chemototrophic primary production. So the vent systems are characterized by extreme temperatures, the absence of light, and therefore of photosynthesis activity. They can be ephemeral or stable habitats, depending on their geological origins. And uh, for example, we see that uh, Bacarc Basin's uh, vents undergo slower natural changes and a lower frequency of natural disturbance than mid-ocean ridge systems. So this means that um, Bacarc Basin's community could be less resilient to high natural viability and to anthropogenic disturbances. Now, let's talk about the connectivity of vent fields of the southwestern Pacific. In the marine environment, the um, connectivity depends on larval dispersal. Mitterai et al. in 2016 modeled the particulate dispersion at different depths uh, in the southwest Pacific to hypothesize the connectivity among basins. So they suggested a connectivity across the southwest Pacific for species with long larval dispersal capabilities. And they also suggested strong connectivity uh, between Manus and Woodlark basins and North Fiji and Low basins. Biological and geological factors such as the South Equatorial Current are actually influencing uh, the connectivity. And an important fact to know is that the majority of uh, vent organisms are actually benthic with a pelagic and swimming larvae stage. Um, and this actually allows for hygiene flow among the basins. Then um, we, we can see that, uh, however, uh, the, the connectivity might still be impaired by deep um, sea mining activities. And uh, this, um, this connectivity will be impaired even more in the Southwest Pacific due to the um, high concentration in polymetallic sulfide deposits. Then, um, in this framework, uh, the objectives of this study were first to assess the genetic diversity within and among vent fields of the southwestern Pacific. So the definition of the genetic diversity will allow inferring uh, the evolutionary and demographic histories of the community. And this will also, and the results will also represent a reference of the ecosystem uh, state prior to any mining impact. A specific focus was performed on the Albinocaridae shrimp family and the Polynoidae scale worm uh, family. The second objective was to define the biogeographic connections between five vent fields. Um, after, so the species identification was first based on morphological identification and then verified with a barcode approach using uh, the molecular marker cytochrome C oxidase 1, CO1. So the use of molecular technique, uh, techniques actually helps in revealing the um, cryptic species. So uh, it's when one morphospecies actually includes several genetically distinct ones. So now let's move on to the material and methods. Specimen collection was uh, performed during the Shubaka cruise in 2019. The five hydrothermal vent zones were uh, sampled, so Manus, Woodlark, North Fiji and Low Basins, as well as the Futuna Volcanic Arc. The uh, specimens uh, were retrieved from depths ranging from 1,200 meters to 3,300 meters by a remote operated vehicle. After morphological identification, tissue, tissues were collected, then DNA was extracted and uh, the CO1 gene was amplified via the polymerized chain reaction PCR. The PCR products were then sent for purification and bidirectional Sanger sequencing. 
For the data analysis, the produced uh, figures and indices will be presented in the results section. So in our study, DNA extraction was performed on 891 organisms in which 688 CO1 sequences were retrieved. Out of this data set, 101 species uh, were identified within 20 families of the phyla Anelida, Arthropoda and Mollusca. So across the species, different distribution patterns could be observed, and you can see that uh, in this table. So within the Nereididae family, there was uh, one species that was isolated in minus basin, while the other one was uh, limited to North Fiji and low basins. Uh, so this supports the hypothesis of Meteorite et al. in 2016, since it uh, shows uh, segregation between the east and west parts of the southwestern Pacific. However, such segregation did not apply to all species, since we can see here with this crab species, Ostinogria alesa A, that uh, it was distributed uh, from woodlark to low basins. And um, this difference in uh, distribution might be due to differences in dispersal strategies. Then, speaking of Ostinogria alesae, at least three cryptic species were actually identified with a clear regionalization. So the first one was uh, found across uh, several distant localities in the Southwest Pacific, while uh, species B was only found in Manus and, A, and species C in Futuna of Volcanic Arc. And uh, then I would like to say that uh, some families were more abundant than others, so further analysis were performed on those abundant families. So within the shrimp family Adlinocarididae, seven morphospecies were identified. You can find them right here in this phylogenetic tree that was uh, produced using the software MEGA. And we can see here that there's differences in terms of distribution, but also in terms of range of distribution, with some species distributed uh, in multiple localities and some in only uh, one basin. So uh, one of the identified species was uh, Nautilocaritus Saint Laurentae. Uh, 38 sequences were retrieved from uh, Manus Basin, uh, North Fiji and Low Basins, as well as the Futuna Volcanic Arc. And uh, the pairwise FST estimates were actually uh, not significant, meaning that in our data set, no regionalization was observed. On top of that, the inferred haplotype network uh, produced in Popart was, um, had a star-like shape um, with one more abundant haplotype surrounded by less frequent haplotypes differing by one or two mutational steps. This is the typical structure of a population in which the biodiversity decreased due to a bottleneck event. Then uh, statistical tests were also performed and uh, supported the idea of a bottleneck event followed by a population expansion. And I will come back on those tests uh, later on. Um, also, we observed a state of panmixia for the population of Nautilocaris Saint Laurentae, and this absence of regionalization might be due to the South Equatorial Current along with long distance larval dispersal capabilities. On a general note, um, adenocarididae shrimps have actually um, an extended lecithotrophic larvae stage, meaning that they have a long distance dispersal potential. For Rimicaris variabilis, another shrimp species, um, we identified at least four cryptic species with clear regionalization that you can see here with the different clusters. So cluster A comprised uh, sequences originating from Manus, Woodlark and North Fiji basins. Three sequences from North Fiji were actually observed in cluster A, while the remaining one uh, belonged to cluster B1, B2 and B3. Clusters B1 and B2 had um, sequences originating from uh, North Fiji low, uh, and low basins, as well as the Futuna Volcanic Arc. And then an isolated individual uh, named uh, B3 was actually uh, observed in uh, North Fiji. The pairwise FST estimates were significant here, so meaning that we had a regionalization as observed with the clusters. And on top of that, the um, haplotypes uh, networks actually show multiple abundant haplotypes. Um, so as explained earlier, it reveals the existence of bottleneck events. The st statistical tests were also uh, showing um, bottleneck events followed by population expansion. 
then uh, there was there was another abundant uh, family in our study, so the scale worm family Polynoidae. Within this family, 900 species are actually uh, comprised, and 60 of them are endemic to hydrothermal vents. In our study, we identified 37 species of polynoids uh, within uh, some uh, in which some were not are not yet uh, described. Uh, the distribution of those uh, species is actually quite similar with the uh, shrimp species. So we see that uh, the distribution is highly variable across the species and uh, the range also varies a lot. So the distribution patterns are highly variable even within closely related species such as a bronchipolinoe chasmantoi that is distributed throughout the southwest Pacific and uh, bronchipolinoe af petibone a that is only present in a Manas basin. Then within a basin, we also saw some um, isolation with, for example, bronchipolinoe sepic that was only present in cold seeps in Manas basin. Um, species uh, diversity and richness was the highest for Manas basin since it had uh, 19 species identified. As a comparison, low basin comprised uh, eight species. So uh, one of the Manus species was a Brontipolinoe chasmantoi. 41 sequences were inferred from um, the, this study and additional data. And uh, this polynoid species actually uh, was distributed across several distant localities, including the Mariana Trench, the Manus and Low Basins, and also the Futuna Volcanic Arc. The absence of geographic segregation uh, might be linked to the influence of the South Equatorial Current, along with the fact that uh, polynoid species have large lecithotrophic eggs, allowing for long distance dispersal. Uh, also, the uh, haplotype network uh, shapes uh, reveals the possibility of um, the occurrence of bottleneck events for this species as well. Um, no further analysis were then performed uh, for this species due to the low sample size per locality. So now uh, we, could, we can say that in our study for the three uh, studied species, um, there was evidence of a past demographic bottleneck followed by population expansion. The uh, highly significant and negative Tajimas D and Fuendis D values uh, inferred from the software DNA SP actually um, uh, show um, an event of bottleneck and uh, followed by expansion. So uh, actually those tests reveal the existence of bottlenecks or population expansion. And in our case, they are negatively significant, meaning that uh, we are here in a case of population expansion or selective sweep. The significant expansion tests also support the idea of expansion. Then, uh, based on our calculations, the um, ages of the bottleneck events varied from 74 to 340,000 years, and they corroborated glaciation period states, which you can find right here. So we could hypothesize that these uh, bottleneck events were caused by um, the geological events and their effects uh, on populations were likely massive. And to link it back to deep sea mining, the, um, we could hypothesize that, um, the, um, that the mining operations might have less impact on the populations. But however, uh, the, the bottleneck events are still measurable and visible on the genetic diversity, even uh, 340,000 years later. So mining operations could still impact an entire uh, population. We don't know uh, yet. So to conclude, a large number of sequences were actually sampled and uh, obtained during this study. Uh, organisms from the Aldinocaridae and Polynoidae family were the more abundant. And uh, the biological and geological factors had a large influence on uh, species dispersal and basin's connectivity. The high, connect uh, high connectivity was observed between Manus and Woodlark and North Fiji and Low Basins, as suggested by Mitara et al. in 2016. Uh, then for the three studied species, uh, we observed evidence of a past demographic bottleneck followed by population expansion, and uh, the glaciation uh, periods might be the cause for those uh, bottlenecks. To finish with, uh, some species were actually um, limited to one basin or even a single site. This was the case for um, Woodlark Basin, in which um, 
because it had a, a unique species composition that was only present in one site. So for those species, unless we find them elsewhere, the, the deep sea mining will have serious impacts on them. And on a more general note, mining exploitation is actually a threat to uh, advanced biodiversity. So thank you for your attention. And if you have any question, please uh, don't hesitate.